Hi everyone, I'm here today to show you how to use Zoom. So this is great for video chatting, sh sharing your screen, recording lessons, and all of those options. There are several great features that come with this program and I'm gonna walk you through them. The first thing you wanna do is use their verification form to show that you are using a school email address because they are taking away the limit on chatting. I will link that below so you can get to that. Once you've logged in and your account is verified, you can click host a meeting to start a meeting. You can also schedule a meeting and you can do video on and off. So if you don't feel comfortable showing your face, you don't have to, you can just use screen share, it's up to you. The thing about Zoom that's a little different than using a Google type chat is that it does allow make you um, download a program when you first use it, you kind of are installing it. Um, so it's a little bit different. So since I'm using this program, I'm just gonna shut my camera because I'm recording with my screen. So you're not gonna see my screen through the Zoom program at the moment. But you can see that it's gonna look like this. So you can invite participants in a few ways. You can either invite people through um, chatting or you can copy the URL or copy the invitation and this will allow you to email it, add it to Google Classroom, whatever you need to do. Okay. So once I'm in my meeting here, I can enlarge my screen however I choose and there's a couple of really good features about Zoom and I'm gonna show you them right here. So one of them is that you can have your students be muted automatically. So if you open up the Manage Participants section, you can come over here and put um, allow participants to unmute yourself. So if you don't want your students to be able to mute and unmute or talk during this, you can just hit mute all, okay? And you can uncheck allow them to unmute. This will not give them the option to unmute and they will not be able to speak and maybe disrupt your lesson. It's up to you how you want to set that up. You also have the option to chat, but be careful because students can chat privately with each other. So you might wanna shut that off. If you go under the chat section and you hit these little more, it says here participants can chat with no one, the host, everyone publicly and privately. So be careful. If you're trying to get your students to join and share ideas and collaborate, then you're gonna to wanna to have them, everyone can, um, join in publicly. If you want them only to be able to chat with you, if they have questions on what you're showing, well then put host only because you're the host. But be careful about this privately because they could write each other and you won't even know about it. So you want to probably switch that off. So that is another good feature that they have. Now your students from their end, you can't see it there, but from their end, they could raise their hand with an emoji and you will get a little notification saying, Joe raised his hand. You can address that student, ask them questions. They can give a thumbs up. You can say, if you are if you understand this, give a thumbs up and everybody can give a little thumbs up emoji. You can have them clap, you know, up to you. They have some options there. You can also work record your session. So you can record this. And even if you were doing this by yourself, you could record it. You can share it with your students through Google Classroom, or if not every student is able to join in at the moment, you can record that and share, save that. Now your share screen option is pretty cool because there's many features. So not only can you share your regular screen, but you can actually share as a whiteboard. So if I click here and press share, you'll see that I've got this whiteboard option. Now, this is cool if you're especially doing math or something where you wanna show the students, you can um, change your lines, you can change your thickness, you can add font, you can 
show examples if you were doing some kind of math problems, okay? You can even have the students write on here. So if you're doing something and you want the students to participate, you can add them on. So this is a really cool feature. You can save this again if you want to show students. I like that. Another screen share option is sharing your iPhone or iPad. So what this is going to do, if you want to model something through that, you can use the screen mirroring on your phone or iPad to show that. And it'll really just replicate your phone or iPad right up on there. So that's another cool feature. Also, you can do um, screen sharing what is on your computer, one specific window, the whole desktop, depending on what you want to show them. There is also showing just a small portion of the screen. If you have an external camera, like a Hue or document camera, you can even link that. And then you can link any of your files. So if I was going to link Google Drive, I can actually go in my Google Drive. It will ask permissions. But from there, I can show um, certain files. So if I wanted to show like this assignment that I made, I have the option to show if I want to share it with everyone, anyone on my organization. So we're, since we're school accounts, we're visible for anyone. If you have people that are like parents logging in and they're not on your education, you might want to hit that. And I can screen share and it's automatically bringing up this file through Google Classroom and everyone can see it. So it's pretty cool and it's easy to do. If you don't want to link Zoom with your Google account, you can just open your Google account in another window, but um, it's a cool way of doing that as well. So there are a lot of great features. Um, it's very simple and easy to use. So if it's something that you're interested in, with your students. Again, you can chat with video, without video. My video is not live on Zoom, so you can see it's just my photo. You can change that, whatever you prefer. Um, another fun, this is just for fun, but you can come here and choose a virtual background. And let's say I want to put myself in the beach or upload your own. Your students will love this if you're kind of just having fun. So let's say I close this out. It should allow my camera to work now. If I hit yes, that's my virtual background. Let's see. There I am. I am on the beach teaching, having a blast. So you can plug in your own backgrounds. If you're doing a science lesson on space, you could put yourself in space just for fun. I don't even have a green screen, so it's kind of just doing it on its own. It's a little glitchy if you like start moving around but your students will definitely probably get a kick on kick out of it. If you're reading some kind of book, you could put yourself in the setting, in the background. So I think that is a lot of fun. Um, so enjoy Zoom. I think it is a great tool and they were super nice to make it time extended for teachers with all that is going on. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to help and when you're done with your meeting, you're just going to hit end meeting. You do want to hit end meeting for all so that your students aren't left in chatting and you're done. Okay. I do want to show you that Zoom has a Chrome extension. So if you search for Zoom extension, you can get this Chrome extension to help you run some meetings. You can see that once you sign in with your Google account that you created it with, it's going to be up here. You can then schedule a meeting or start a meeting with video on or off. And it's a little bit quicker than having it um, through the website. It's just an extension and you'll get right there. Okay. Here I am at the beach. <laughs> You can also schedule a meeting. So you can see here, you can name your meeting. You can go in and pick when you're having it, how long it's gonna be. Um, if you want a password, you don't need to make the password. You can put, if you're gonna answer with videos, you want your participants on having video. So if you're meeting with your students and you don't want to see their video, 
You can shut their video off automatically. You can also decide if you want um, them to be able to do computer audio or phones. So if you have students without technology, they can actually phone in. And then you can even um, have Google Calendar and you could even mute the participants if you only want them to be joining and not really talking. If you want them to just use the chat, it's totally up to you. And you can schedule the meeting. It will sync again with your Google, so you're gonna have to allow it. But once you get in, always allow it. It is a safe program. Once you get in, you see that you can um, add in a calendar request. So if I wanted to start a new call, I would click on the date and I can name my meeting and you can see here that I would be able to choose right here, make it a Zoom meeting. And that is going to automatically link this. So if I were inviting people, it's telling me that people, it is scheduled, they would come in, they would click, they would have the password um, up to you, how you want to set that up. You can see that you can invite people right here, add guests, you would be able to invite your students. You would also be able to um, share this link to join through Google Classroom. So keep that in mind. Ignore this because they're letting us get more time. So don't worry about that. Okay. You can also do it through the Zoom app. So if you don't want a password and you don't want your students to have videos, but I want my video on, they can come through talking. I want them to be muted. I want a waiting room because I want to be in there before they're in there. And now I can schedule it. It will pop up on my Google Calendar. Um, you can add that in. Okay, and save that. On my website, I have it linked and I will link it below too with the item. So let me know.